Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction film, 2047 Virtual Revolution. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a group of four warriors in the middle of the woods, two men and two women, helping each other to defeat their opponent. They each use their skill with their weapon, until they manage to kill their opponent with a stab in her heart. One of the women teleports with the older man and the other woman, leaving the remaining man in the woods. He checks his emails before logging out, and that man is Nash's virtual avatar. As Nash returns to the outside world, he reveals that he now lives in the year 2047. In the century of technological revolution, people's expectations of flying cars and more spatial exploration happened. More than 75% of the population, known as the Connected, spend most of their lives in online virtual games called Verses. Over time, these Verses become more and more realistic, until it has become challenging to discern them from reality. Nash drives to Synerny's Corp, one of the largest Versus providers, where he meets one of the operatives, Dina. She informs him about the death of 148 players due to a computer virus attack, presumably the work of the terrorist group, the Necromancers. Nash's job is to track and eliminate these attackers, while the Synerny's will clean the mess they made to keep it hidden from Interpol. Dina gives the location where the virus was traced and instructs Nash to contact them to clean after he eliminates the Necromancers. Nash proceeds to the given location despite the rainy night. Nash invades the building without much trouble. This is because no one is around, one of the good things with having most of the population locking itself inside their homes. As Nash searches what seems to be an abandoned building, a bald man suddenly attacks him from behind and starts beating him. Nash is weaker than the man despite his best attempt to dominate the fight. The bald man takes his ID and gun before leaving the premises. After regaining his strength, Nash goes to Moral, whose neighborhood is much more populated than the rest. Moral is a genius hacker and the brother of his girlfriend, the only woman Nash ever loved. After getting his bruises treated, Nash asks Moral to access the history records from the building he just went to by hacking through Interpol servers. Moral knows he can do it despite the risk, but he wants something in return. He wants a list of hardware from Nash's clients for that task. Nash gives him the description of the bald man's appearance, as all he needs is the bald man's face in good resolution, so that he can identify him. If Moore can't find him, Nash instructs him to do a face recognition analysis of the people seen appearing near the building in the last week. Suddenly, Moore mentions Nash's lover, pissing off Nash and prompting him to leave. However, Nash knows that even Moore feels something is off with his lover's death. On that same day, Moore comes to Nash's home and informs him that he found nothing about the bald man. However, there is something else. Moore found a guy who appeared several times during the last three days before Nash arrived in the building. Moore puts the resolution scan on a flash drive to avoid sending it over the net. The following day, Nash goes to Synerny's Corp and gives the flash drive to Dina to put it through the company's database to identify the guy. After a short while, they identify the guy named Leonard and his address. Before leaving, Nash asks for another gun, and Dina instructs him to stop by the warehouse to get it. The gun will be deducted from his bounties. Nash breaks into Leonard's apartment through his bathroom window. Nash finds Leonard lying on his gaming chair, which means he's currently in the virtual world. However, Leonard is not alone. The same bald man attacks Nash, and the two struggle in a fight, while Leonard lies unbothered. This time, Nash wins the fight with his new gun. After killing the bald man, Nash barricades the door with a chair, before shooting Leonard in the head. It seems unmanly to kill a man who can't defend himself. But then again, Leonard launched a virus that killed 148 innocent gamers. Since Leonard is still connected, Nash takes his place in the virtual world. Upon switching places with the dead Leonard, Nash witnesses Leonard's avatar as a tempting blonde woman with a high sex drive, a typical avatar. Nash leaves the manager trois scene and leaves the premises to go to the necromancer's virtual hideout with Leonard's fellow necromancer. On the way there, the two go through an ambush, which they survive successfully, despite being outnumbered and outweaponed. After that, they go to the necromancer's leader, Camel's office, where Nash discovers their plan. Necromancer terrorist group aims to scare the gamers off, so they would leave the verses and engage in the outside world more. However, they need to change their strategy radically because their approach is not working. People think the gamers who died or vanished in the verse are just playing on other verses. Nash asks about their new angle, but they do not answer. They hold Nash's avatar and reveal that they know it's not Leonard playing. It turns out the group has a rallying sign whenever they come in, which Nash fails to do. Nash refuses to reveal his identity, but Camel reassures him that he will talk. Camel instructs two of her men to go offline and go to Leonard's apartment as they know he's there. For Nash to use Leonard's avatar, he must be in Leonard's apartment. Nash attempts to log out, but he fails. Camel points out a small device in the office and explains that it prevents anyone around from disconnecting. As Nash is held hostage, Camel explains their goal. The technological revolution allowed corporations and politicians to control people's lives. 
They benefit as long as the connected stay in their almost vegetative-like state and create more and more verses to keep them engaged in the virtual world. This is why Interpol is now on the case to stop the necromancers from ruining a multi-billion dollar industry. Nash breaks free and takes the pin of a flash grenade from one of Camel's men, destroying the small device. Nash disconnects just in time, as two of Camel's men barge into Leonard's apartment. Nash kills them with his gun and leaves to go back to Mole's home. Nash immediately instructs Moral to search the database from the verse or meta worlds. He wants to find out who's been logging in and out the last few hours, but then they have unwanted visitors. Nash hides away not to be seen by the unexpected visitors. Moral faces the special agent from Interpol and his subordinates. The agent confronts Moral about the hacking he did on the Interpol servers. As expected, Moral lies to them, saying that he was just curious, which of course they do not buy. One of the subordinates punches Moral in the face as a punishment and to force the truth out of him. Moore lies again, but now more convincingly by saying he came across an internal memo at Vesclis Corporation about the attack. He adds that he has thought that if he could discover some valuable information, he might negotiate a good amount of credits by selling it. Moore denies working for multinational companies and explains that these companies contact him to test their security cameras by finding out their failures. If he succeeds, he gets a nice amount of credits after a report explaining the failures and how to correct the system. The agent seems convinced by this and asks if Interpol can use his hacking skills in the future. Morl agrees with the deal expectedly, and tells them that he found nothing on those cameras. After that, the agent and his men leave Morl. Nash thanks Morl for not telling them the truth and returns home, where he takes a rest by playing. However, Nash receives an email from Dina, so he logs out and goes to Synerny's. Dina asks for an update. Nash informs her he had someone, presumably Morl, looking at the connections and disconnections of the zone where the necromancers hide, but nothing came up. Dina wants the problem resolved as soon as possible, as she dislikes Interpol's involvement in their business. Dina instructs Nash to use his private connection to gather more information faster than Interpol and keep her updated. Nash leaves Synerny's and goes to Morl. He wants to know what the Interpol knows about the Cybertronic attacks, and Morl will do the task. After that, Nash returns home and finally meets the Necromancer's leader, Camel, in the flesh. Camel calmly reveals to Nash that although they used the virus, Sinner's Corporations is the one that created it. The terrorist group stole it from the company and modified it to their liking, which unfortunately was the reason behind his lover's death. Camel explains that Synerny's identified them as a threat after they began their movement. So Synerny's developed a program capable of killing players while they're online. Synerny's were scanning every conversation in the verses, and whenever they found a necromancer, they would kill them. That's when they started developing new cloaking tactics. It took them a while before they figured out how the Synerny's killing program worked. It modified it and improved it to be able to kill more people at a time. Camel explains that Nash's lover was close to their movement, which made her a target for Synerny's. This upsets Nash greatly as he realizes he's been working for the people responsible for the death of the woman he loved. So Camel offers him a window for revenge, and in exchange, he will help them as they are cornered by the corporations in Interpol. So Nash informs Camel that when Mole tapped in Interpol's file, it revealed that the Interpol managed to track the money transfers they made to pay the rent of the loft that they used to launch the attack. Interpol identified two men, one of which is Leonard, who is already dead. However, the remaining one is under heavy surveillance, which is bad news, because the man is instrumental in the group's plan. Camel explains that their new strategy will end the killings, but will fulfill the group's aim and purpose, to free all the connected. Nash raises his concern about whether the freedom they're offering is really what people want. Camel replies that everyone wants freedom, but Nash is not totally on board with this idea. Despite that, Nash offers his help to the terrorist group. On the other hand, the agent and his man follow a necromancer down by a bridge. However, they lose the necromancer and discover that necromancers use a manhole as their mode of transportation to keep themselves hidden. The agent instructs his man to check the satellite history, while the scene reveals that Nash is the person who came down the manhole before the necromancer. Nash meets with Camel again in the hideout under the ground, where they discuss the rest of the plan. The following day, Nash subtly shares with Moral that he's working for both Synony's Corp and the necromancers. This immediately concerns Moral, as this is more than risky. Nash dismisses Moore's worry and asks him about any information on Interpol's servers. Moore shares that Interpol has an informant who works with the necromancers. The Interpol has a meeting with this informant in an hour at an old city hall. Nash quickly checks it out, only to be cornered and held hostage by the Interpol. The agent explains that the camera recording history that Nash asked Moore to check out showed Nash a few hours after a certain Cybertronic attack. Nash was also seen through the satellite image when they lost a lead under a bridge. The agent reveals that he drafted a note about some fake meeting, with an informant to wait and see who would show up. The agent knows that Nash is working with the Necromancers, and Synerny's Corp currently has no knowledge about Nash's involvement with the case. With that, the agent reveals the true purpose of this fake meeting. He wants Nash to continue working for Synerny's and work for the Interpol as well. He wants to know first everything that Synerny's learns, and Nash must ask for their authorization before any drastic actions. 
Just as Nash is about to answer, the necromancers suddenly appear and kill the agent's men, while Nash kills him. Camel informs Nash that their plan is almost ready, so they move to Nash's place to discuss it with him. They will launch a virus that one of Camel's men created, that will progressively shut down every console, until the verses themselves disappear. People will be forced offline and get their lives back, freeing all of the connected. However, they must launch the virus within the matrix of one of the main verses, to replicate and spread. This means they need to launch the virus from inside the Synerny's headquarters. Camel gives Nash a device for him the next time he goes to Synerny's, and tells him that all he needs to do is stay near a high-clearance computer, long enough for them to spread the virus. Nash tells Camel that he cannot do this, as he doesn't know anything about hacking. Camel answers that he doesn't need to do anything else, but bring the device. By the time the attack fully launches, Nash wouldn't be inside Synerny's building anymore. Camel assures him that nothing will connect him to the attack. After the conversation, Camel leaves with her men to prepare for the attack, leaving Nash torn about whether he will help the terrorist group with their goal of freeing the connected. Nash still has doubts that this freeing that the necromancers claim sounds like forcing freedom on the people. Nash asks himself if it's even possible to force freedom on a people, and if it is, should it even be done? After long contemplation, Nash follows through with Camel's instructions, and heads out to the Synerny's headquarters with the given device. This prompts the necromancer hackers to launch the virus. After helping the terrorists launch the virus within Synerny's, Nash then returns home, and logs into the virtual world, where several players discover the attack by the necromancers. Players from the entire verse are revealing the necromancer's place, wanting everyone near the terrorists' hideout to intervene. Some players quickly locate the necromancers. These nearby players go to the loft where the necromancers hide. The furious players bang on the door while holding their avatar's weapons. Camel and her men did not expect this kind of reaction from the people, as they thought the connected would want this freedom, and that this would create a revolution. Camel and her men ready their weapons, aiming at the door, outside, still echoing with an angry mob shouts. The players barge in immediately, and despite some being killed by Camel and her men, the people manage to kill the leader and the hackers. After the failed attempt of the necromancers to free the connected against their will, Nash heads to Synerny's to talk to Dina. Dina dismisses Nash from his mission, as they had already found the necromancers, and identified the remaining members. Before he leaves, Dina reveals that their programmers have conclusive evidence that the virus was launched within the headquarters. They know that he was in there before the said attack. Dina has the power and connection to investigate whether he has any involvement with the necromancers, but she won't, because the case is already closed. Dina also admits to creating the virus, but in her defense, Synerny's history would reveal that the necromancers designed their own version for months, since Nash's lover was working for Synerny's, when after the necromancers found this out, they decided to kill Nash's lover. But even upon hearing this from Dina, Nash still doesn't know whom to truly believe. Dina and Nash exchange their farewells. Nash moves on with his life with more questions than ever. He still doesn't know who to believe regarding his lover's death, and is problematic about the said technological revolution. The film ends with Nash resorting to being a connected, abandoning the real world just like most of the population. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.